Many greenhouses in Massachusetts are using biological control to manage pests. Uh, I've asked Carrie Stafford from Cavicchio Greenhouses to share with us some of the information that she's learned and some of the things she's doing with biological control to manage pests in their greenhouse ranges. Here at Cavicchio's, we use beneficial nematodes for control of fungus gnat, thrip, and shore fly. We use it continuously in our propagation. Um, we dip all our cuttings in a mixture of nematodes and we also do a weekly drench. We find that it takes care of all our fungus gnat and shore fly issues and in general, we've never really done any sprays, any pesticides, chemical sprays since we've been using them. For um, our finished product, project, products, <laughs> we'll use them for, um, we'll use it as a spray or a sprench just to control thrips. We'll do them early in the day or late in the day or on a cloudy day, we have all day that we can use them. We get the nematodes in usually about a day before we need them or the day we need them. They're really easy to order. All I have to do is call our broker to put them in and we can have them overnight in here by the next day. We would like to keep a small stock of them just so we don't have too many of them. Um, we like to just use them up as quickly as possible, as fresh as possible. Our storage here isn't as dependable as it could be for them, so we like to use them as fast as possible. They like to be stored around 42 degrees and our fridge goes with the weather. As you say, it's up and down and we never know what it is. Here's the box we got in this morning of beneficial nematodes. Um, I'll just take a, open it up for you. As soon as they come in, we like to check them right away just to make sure that the ice packs are frozen still, they still look good, and pretty much once we open them, as soon as they come off the FedEx truck, we're putting them directly back into the fridge, at least for an hour before we start using them. And then we can take them out and use them. Um, they come in nicely packed well insulated, so we just pull out our boxes, it's covered in ice packs. You like to check to make sure your ice packs are still frozen when they come in, and if they are, that's good. That means your nematode should still be fresh and things are still cold. So here's one box. This is what we usually order in. We get in the 1.25 billion boxes, which when you open them up, they come in with five separate little packages. We pull them out and it's 250 million per package and they come in just like this. We like to take a quick look at them just to make sure that they look good. Sometimes you'll see some discoloration which we like to avoid and it makes us a little nervous about using them but usually if they come in just like this, all one color, we know that they should be good. So we take out what we need or we just throw them directly into the fridge. We like to keep them in the fridge for about at least an hour before we use them just to make sure they're still cool. And then we go from there. This is how we mix up nematodes here. This is why we get the 1.25 billion box because they come in packets of 250 million. 250 million at the high rate mixes up two and a half gallons. So we'll use two of these packages and we'll fill a five gallon bucket. Usually we'll always use five gallons when we're, when we're mixing it, 500 gallons when we're mixing them. So all we do is we uh, take the box off and we open the packages. Usually it's easy to tear at the corner. And we just shake them into our bucket. And we'll do both at the same time. And we'll shake it in. Usually I just fill up the bucket really slowly as I go. So I'll just turn on light pressure and I'll rinse my packages as I do it. And as I'm filling it, I usually mix it. The key to mixing nematodes is you need to get them mixed as well as you can and constantly keep them agitated. Um, a lot of people will use like a, a bubbler in there to keep them agitated. We're usually moving our dosatron frequently enough that we'll constantly mix it every time we pass it. Unless for some reason we're gonna hold on to any of this solution, then we'll put something else in it to aerate it, because if you're not aerating it, you end up killing off the nematodes, and it develops this thick film at the bottom of the bucket, which is really hard to suck up through the dosatron anyways, and you really don't want that at all. It'll clog your nozzles, and you know it's just, it's not working as effectively. Um, so once we have that well mixed, we uh, make sure to take all our filters out, out of our dosatrons. So we take the one right out of the bell out 
And then we have one that we have attached to the bottom of our hose like this, which we'll take off. Um, with the filters on, they'll end up catching up the nematodes and you don't want to do that. You want to get as many as you can through. When we're doing our nematode sprenches, we have our, or drenches, we keep our dositron set at a one to 100 rate. And that's the best way to do it, I think. And you can see we did right up to our five gallon mark, which with these packets, it's so easy because if you just need 250 gallons, you fill it up halfway. And if you need the five, you go right up to the top. And like I said before, we either sprench our nematodes or we're drenching. With our prop material, we're usually doing a heavy drench. With our, our finished product, we're doing a light sprench just to get as much coverage as we can um, on top of the plants just to keep the water droplets there. So when we turn it on, I just turn it on slowly and just let it run for a minute to let the dositron work all the nematodes through the hose. We don't even mind getting it on the floor. We like to just put it on the floor because it helps with any issues that we have. A lot of our greenhouses have the dirt floor or the covered dirt floors. And we find even just putting it on the floor or sprenching it in our houses that are small, it takes care of some of your thrip issues that you have growing up on weeds or anything underneath the benches as well. So we'll just let it run for a minute, make sure it's all coming out. We don't use shutoffs either when we're running our nematode drenches. We like to keep the constant flow. Um, if you do shut them off, you find that you end up killing some of them or, or hurting some of them. So when we're just doing a, a light sprench. We'll usually just walk back quickly, nice and even, and go over the plants. We'll do a sprench far more frequently than we'll actually do a spray. We find that the sprays are far more time consuming and you have to make sure your sprayer is at 300 PSI or smaller. Unless we're doing a hanging basket crop, we're doing a sprench. It's a lot quicker, it's a lot easier to get to, it's a lot less time consuming. And that's one of the reasons why we use beneficial nematodes in the first place is you can do them at any time without having to worry about an REI or taping off, especially during the busy season. It's something you can do with people coming in and picking product and unfinished product like impatience it's a really great thing to do because you're doing a light watering half the time anyway so it's nice to be able to just go through and and sprench them all right this is where we do our cutting dipping um, this container is about 10 gallons of water which we'll put in one of these 50 million packs of nematodes same way we do the other ones it comes in just a little package instead of a bigger package we just open it up Usually they're easy to open. And we just slide it through and mix it. I want to circulate the water around while it gets mixed in there. The nice thing about dipping the cuttings is it constantly keeps the water moving around. So there's usually one person from the crew who just sits here and dips cuttings and hands them out and is constantly doing that. So what we'll do is instead of even taking them out of the bags, the cuttings come in, they'll come in usually in a bag. We'll dip the entire bag in. That way you don't have loose cuttings floating around. So we'll just submerge them. Let the water fill into the bags. Usually the one dipping the cuttings comes a little before the whole crew's here just to get the, a little ahead of the game. And they'll usually just fill the bin with bags of cuttings and go from there just to let them soak in. And this just nicely coats the cuttings with some nematodes to take care of anything that might already be there. And
So once there's water in the bag and they seem, seem good, they'll actually just take them out and leave them on this, this homemade rack we use, which is just a tray with just some fine, some fine like wire netting over top of it. And then once they're all dipped and have drained out a bit, they'll usually hand it over to the people on the line who are sticking and they'll all get stuck. That's pretty much it. <laughs>